Hello everybody and welcome to a new part of Let's Play Spectre of Torment. Today we are going to do a clockwork tower tinkernite so let's start. Are you prepared to vest the clockwork tower? I'm ready. First thing get some gems from the dirt pile. Then we'll jump off the right wall and hit the lantern to get to the ladder. Climb the left wall and kill the mouse. Then break the upper right wall for a chest. Drop down, kill the mouse and go jump to the left for red skull number 1, jumping back to the right to continue on. The gear wizards are back to annoy us. If you remember, they simply spawn moving gears. Try to hit one. Use the gears to get the pink gems then get red gems here. And then use the gear again to get to the upper right platform. See the cylinder below you? If you stay on it, it will lower, but the one to the right gets higher. Use the cylinders here to get the gems. And the annoying enemy is back fairies. Now use this cylinder to raise that one so you can continue. This cylinder goes down this cylinder goes. Left climb it to grab red skull number 2. You can hit the gear while it goes to the right to get to the checkpoint and kill the gear wizard. Then use the bottom one to reach a wall for a wall run to get to the top and then climb the ladder. At least time it better don't time it like me. This screen has a destroyable wall to your right for a rotten carrot, and then we need to kill the gear welder enemies. These guys aren't new, but remember they dance around, and launch gears like boomerangs, so take them out quickly. You need to fall to the platform below, and jump to solid ground. Wait until the ceiling comes down above you to wall run up to the treadmill up above. Three parts of the ceiling will try to smash you, so time your movement on the treadmill. Now jump over when platforms are up, to get red skull number 3. Now get back. Use this gear to get to the platform. Then jump on the bottom gear and wall jump to the ladder. And we have a new enemy clock a They cling to a surface before the rocket jumping to an opposite one. They possess 3 hit points, and deal half a damage point. Depending on how they face, that the way there are going to rocket jump. There's also this chest you need to break the wall to get it. Then kill this clock a They possess 3 hit points, and deal half a damage point. Then wall jump to get that red gem, and use the right wall to get to the ladder. Now we need to get where that send is, but to do that we need to use that top clock a You can't destroy the sand from the below, and you can't wall jump. If you can do it, because the wall is covered with something. Oh I killed it. Never mind you can just jump it sometimes I forgot that he can wall run. And we have another darkness wisp. Kill all the clock a million here, because they can get in your way. Every sand block here has a gem inside so be sure to destroy them and collect gems afterward. I don't know if Red Talon Curio can kill them in one hit but try it. If it can then this will be quicker than killing them with scythe. Now just wall run, and jump where the chest is. And now we have 4 bars of darkness. Now return to the previous room, and continue to the right. Collect 2 pink gems from the sand block. and a rotten apple. Now grab the checkpoint and use the lantern to get to the ladder, and watch out for the gears. This screen has rotating gears in the middle, so we'll need good timing. Jump to the middle treadmill, and when you can, destroy the upper left wall for a large gem. Now wait for the gears to pass by, if you need to wait, and use the lantern to get red skull number 4. You can- what the fuck was that? What did I hit there? A gear. This is weird I don't know what happened there, but let's continue to the next room. We have a dreaded auto scroller. 
kill all the clockamillion if you can. I will also note that clockamillion can move around a bit here, so watch out for them, because they can easily knock you into a pit. Speaking of getting knocked into a pit, break the blocks. Goodbye clockamillion see you when you get down. Anyway wait for the gears to go back up then get to the moving platform. Let the fairy come to you then kill it. Same for this one let it come to you then kill it. And for this one. And be quick, because of the gears above. They will hurt you. Now be quick to get to the dirt pile. And more fairy enemy here. Wait it right here like the rest of them and kill it. And use the lantern. To get red skull number 5. Use the lantern. When lantern reach the left side. Then use the lantern. To get to the platform this time when lantern reach the middle on the right side. And this is the end of auto scroller. And break the wall on the left. Before you drop down. Drop the right moving cylinder all the way down. Grab the checkpoint and wall run to get red skull number 6 then jump down to the lower right to continue on. Wall jump up to the moving cylinder and take it down. The one it moves is meant to crash you so wall jump to the next cylinder. Lower this cylinder and take it down but watch out for the gears. And prepare dread talon because it can one shot this knight. Now lower this one and wall jump of that one. And break the wall on the left for dead turkey. Use the lantern, but watch out for the gears. Then wall jump, jump over the gear in the climb up. Jump over it, only when the gears is down, or risk it to get the biscuit. First thing to do, is destroy all the sand, and kill all the rats. Now hit the middle switch. Middle one extend the right gear and right one extend the left gear, that how you get the red skull, and continue to the left. Crank this lever. I like to hit it couple of times just to be sure. Wall jump and break this wall. For red skull number 8. Now crank this up again, and wall jump to get to the ladder. Oh my god what a save. That save oh my god. I don't think Cloak of Clemency would help me if I touched the spikes. Maybe if I had full HP maybe, but I only had 4 bubbles. You need to hit the lever here continuously, to make a gear from the wizard up above come down to you though, then quickly jump to the right of it, hit it up in the air, and slash through it for red skull number 9. No I missed it let's try that again. I missed again. So let's try again. Come back don't leave me. Two thousand years later. Finally red skull number 9 is mine. And finally let's get this chest. Finally I can move to the next room. Need to trap the gear on the moving gears near the chest. Six and a half hours later. Let's go finally. Get the pink gem destroy the blocks. This is where we were. Ride the platforms to the right and kill the gear welder. Prepare dread talon so you can kill him faster. No, I'm going to die. And I will see you in the second. We have a knight up here, dread talon him, and note the breakable wall to the left. Break it for a rotten turkey, jump up to the checkpoint and use the treadmills, jump quick, to get to the room on the right. Another auto scroller, get to the lantern and slash upwards to the ladder. Get on the platforms, and have the dread talon ready to kill the gear welder on the left. Now, wall climb up to the cylinder and go right. Don't forget if you stand still you will slowly fall off so jump around. And now we have rockets. Avoid the rockets at all cost. Ignore all the gems here it's too risky to get them. And we have one more set of moving platforms. And also get the gems here. And there is the final red skull. Just wall jump to get to the conveyor belts. And jump 2 times to get it. 
Now use lantern from the right side, to get to the left conveyor belt. Now wall jump, and slash the lantern, to get to the other side. Use the lever and use the platform to destroy the upper right wall for a chest. Then destroy the left wall, for a rotten turkey, and get the checkpoint and go right. What are you? Some kind of ghost. Get out of my shop, I have work to do. The enchantress would like a word. We have an army to raise, and talented engineers are in short supply. Ha. Huh. You may be at all, but I'm not. Time to make short work of you. Just like in Shovel of Hope and Plague of Shadows this is a two phase fight. In this phase he has two attacks. Wrench toss where he throw out wrenches. These arch, giving you time to see them and move away, but he will go crazy at times and toss a ton of wrenches. And second attack is spiked gear, Tinker Knight will raise his gear while you fight. One side of the gear will have spikes on it, on the side facing you, and after waiting a bit he will move towards you, slamming those spikes into the wall. Run up the wall, when he does this. So this phase number 2 he has for attack. Wrench toss. The wrench tossing continues. While Tinker Knight floats to the upper left or right, he will still toss out wrenches, arching them up and down at you, if you dare get too close. Of course, we need to get close now more than ever, so try to time your strikes after his wrench tossing if you can. You may find yourself bouncing off of the wrenches actually, so keep at him. Top rocket spam. If you played the first game, you are familiar with this move. See those slots on top of the match. Yeah, every so often rockets are going to fire out of them in a very regular pattern. Right, upwards, upper left. Right, upwards, upper left. Almost like clockwork. Still, with Tinker Knight being in the upper right or upper left, these things are one more annoyance you have to watch out for. Missile Barrage. This move only appears later in the fight these missiles are supposed to help you get on the match when the terrain becomes less helpful. The match always shoots them in a stair pattern, so when you see them coming try to jump to the bottom one and work your way up. Bouncing ball explosives. This move only appears very late in the fight, but hopefully it won't bother you. The match will spit out red and blue balls from the lower left that will bounce out below the match. Dangerous if you are down there, so don't stay down there long if you are. We're almost there. I can feel it. Indeed and a long journey it's been onward. This is Lewin and Donovan. Donovan is Spectre Knight before Spectre Knight destroy the sand, as well as the wall in front of you. To reveal a chest. With the cool drops inside, so cool drops. They act as a trap, causing damage to an enemy that steps on them. You only use them in memories. Now use Lewin to launch Donovan to the platform. And go to the next screen. This screen has a mage you can drop down and kill easily. Then have Lewin help you to the upper, right and up the ladder. Use Lewin again to launch to the top left and top right. Let's kill the skeleton, since I'm on this platform. Now to launch on the right side. Don't fall. Okay let's try that again. Let's try again. Wait why can't I homing on the slime that is BS. Oh thank you for falling Mr. Fire Slime. At least I got some gems now we can continue to the next screen. Use this lantern to get both gems. Then go right and have Luan help you onward. Indestructible checkpoint here. There's a turkey here if you need. 
and also some gems. Now use the win again. Kill the knight. Remember, downward slashes, full, regular slash, downward slashes, full, regular slash, downward slashes, full, regular slash. Break the block then jump to the chest. Tons of gems. Collect even more as you fall downwards. What say we stop here for a night? Donovan, as a father, I'm worried about him. Do you think the amulet will truly protect him from all harm? Your boy has much to learn about the world, certainly, but, if this trinket is as powerful as they say. I, I can only hope the legends hold true. Don't worry, we won't be leaving empty handed. Come now, let's rest, and tomorrow we will find out for ourselves. Now let's visit Red, and buy everything we can from him. Red is not that way you stupid. Barrier land and create a shield which blocks projectiles to charge up. I have exactly 16 to buy everything. When activated, the Barrier Lantern creates a circle of fire around Spectre Knight, similar to one of Renai's attacks in Shovel of Hope. Pressing the button again will release the circle as a projectile. While circling Spectre Knight, the Barrier Lantern will block all incoming projectiles and absorb them to become stronger, making the flames larger. The larger the flames are, the more powerful the attack is when releasing it. Now let's buy Skeletal Sentry. Upon use, Spectre Knight throws a skull behind him, which transforms into a Sentry Bonner Clang upon touching the ground. The Sentry fires three piercing projectiles in a spread, pattern towards Spectre Knight's direction. After firing two waves of projectiles, the Sentry self-destructs in a cross-shaped explosion dealing damage to nearby enemies. The skeletal sentry can also be forced to self-destruct early by pressing the curio button while it is active. The sentry remains stationary but can be knocked around by damaging attacks or from Spectre Knight's side swing. The sentry can only take a few hits before being destroyed. If the sentry is destroyed by enemy attacks, it does not detonate. And I'm going to end the part here I hope you enjoyed, and in the next one we are going to do Pridamore keep by.